Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for waiting during the long break. We've got our second match of three coming up today, and it is Cloud9 versus X Game KZ. Another one of these, um, what's the right word here, gods? I don't want to say one-sided, but fan-favorite type matchups. We've got Cloud9 who have been looking pretty good in this group stage, and X Game KZ who have been a, a little hit or miss in their past few performances. And, oh, hi, gods. I started without you and forgot to un- that's my bad. Hey, man, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm thinking like, okay, two minutes ago, so you said, okay, chicken video is rolling. And I'm like, okay, this video is a lot longer than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got yet another one of these games that uh, we've got the fan favorites versus uh, X Game KZ, who have been looking a little hit or miss in their past few games. Yeah. These guys are in every star ladder, and every star ladder, they're normally middle of the pack or slightly under middle of the pack, but they every now and then cause, like, really big upsets. Like, they used to be known as Next KZ, and they would beat top teams. They even had a period where they were considered very close to being a Tier 1 team, but they never really maintained that consistency. They're a bit volatile with their performances, so... They're a fun team to watch, though. Uh, I, like, yes. I like watching them play. They do usually keep it interesting, and uh, they have, they've played decently well throughout this uh, group stage. Let's actually take a glance at the grid and see where they're sitting. Uh, X Game are currently 2-7, and seven, so they have actually played the most games of any team, sitting at 9, uh, up there with Na'Vi and KPG, who have also played 8. So um, they've certainly played quite a few games. They've had some of their harder matchups, and here Cloud9 will... Really be looking for a win as Cloud9 haven't started off that great. They've played some of the bigger teams uh, in the group stage, but uh, they are only 2-2 two and two right now, so certainly hungry for a few wins. Okay, well, uh, as far as the drafters go, well underway, and Cloud9 just back from China playing some, well, continuing to play lots of matches, and going for a bat rider brewmaster, not really... Uh, I mean, I feel like Cloud9 can go kind of a lot of different openings here. It doesn't They don't really have a set kind of opening as far as what picks they prefer. Like, they, they'll sometimes go for the Bones of a Prophet. They'll sometimes go in another direction. So, as far as these two picks are concerned, sure, they're both kind of core heroes, although you can run Batrider right in the jungle, but it doesn't really reveal too much about their overall strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty straightforward stuff so far. Both sides with uh, heroes that really need no introduction, all the bands making a fair bit of sense along with the meta as well. Though XK, X Game will try and uh, take some time here and decide what they want to ban out and try to read Cloud9 a little bit more. But yes, yeah, still pretty open ended. Yeah, as far as X Game go, normally they try to go, at least I, I haven't seen them actually play much this style either, but past style, they're a very aggressive team. So I feel like the, the central really suits their play style. Shadow Shaman allows them to back up their aggressive po potential three. kills with actual towers so they can actually take objectives, which is always Five key. That's a lot of them. Three. Probably the most common mistake in the Tier 2 style of the teams is nine. they'll often Third get these early back. kills early, at least ganking advantages, but they never really turn it into towers. And that's where a hero like Shadow Shaman can be very strong in that kind of play style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, X Game will ban out Doom and uh, actually the Warlock as well. We've seen Cloud9 Cloud running a fair bit of Warlock ban. recently. That's been the Owie 2000 hero. Uh, he's even done some offlane Warlock uh, and uh, we've seen some just also some kind of position for Warlock where he runs around and helps support the lanes. And it's surprisingly potent. It doesn't even have to be a core Ten Warlock seconds. to make a Ten big difference. And, um, well, Doom. I'm a little surprised to see X Five Game the one to ban remaining. Doom because he's pretty damn good against both Batrider and Brewmaster. Result. Yeah, that's... Hmm. I guess... I guess, I mean, I, if they weren't going to fit into their lineup, it is a hero Cloud9 will run, like, even when they don't have a proper carry, like run a safe lane envy farming doom. So, yeah. yeah. If they're not, I, the main problem is fitting it into their their lineup. Like running a jungle doom makes their lanes really weak, and they've already got the centaur. So, I think it would have been very hard for them to fit into their lineup. I'm not convinced Cloud Nine would want to run it with what they've picked up so far, but yeah. Cloud Nine could potentially snowball pretty fast with a fast blink on the brewmaster doom farming up, getting a blink of his own, and just. Taking towers, getting kill after kill on. You don't really have a good answer for that yet this year, X game. Yeah. Cloud9 was some interesting bands as well. They take out the Dyer Wraith King and then the Alchemist of all heroes. We've seen a little bit of the support Alchemist here and there, but really to limited success. Uh, and every core Alchemist we've seen so far in this season of Star Letter, at least that I've cast, has been pretty much an abysmal failure. So an interesting choice from Cloud9, but they'll pick up Enigma and Cloud X game are right there with the Wisp. 
Okay, Wisp it is. I potential Wisp tiny, but I, I'm happy with Wisp even without the tiny as a partner. Uh, it's it, it's a pretty useful hero all around. Uh, even even against stuff like Enigma Black Hole, like someone caught in that, you could theoretically save with the relocate if you've got some fast fingers here. So a hero that's always fun to watch as well. So I like the Wisp. Ten yeah, if I'm not remaining. mistaken, I think X Game did run a Wisp yesterday for the first Five time of their matches remaining. in this season of Star Ladder, and it seems to be a new strategy that they've been working with. Um, they did a... Um, oh, God, Dyer who did they pair it with? Pick. The other team picked the Tiny right away, Cloud and they were forced to pair the Wisp with something um, a little bit different. And I've totally forgotten now, but they'll grab the Bristle back here, and I reckon that'll be the Wisp pairing here. Not really an obvious Wisp pairing by any means, but it's Wisp is and sometimes all about rain. making that front line of just more tanky, more durable. Bristleback tanky on his own right, Five but you you put a tether on him, you put the uh, the overcharge, and he pretty much becomes unkillable. Reserve At the time. same time, I hmm, like there's so much relying on the Shadow Shaman to push down towers because their Cloud Nine can like their play style is often keep away. They don't want to take Dada fights. They want to just try and play this kind of cheesy style of Dota where they'll go for towers away from your push, they'll creep skip waves, they'll just try and do whatever they can to stall you and put you off kind of put you off your game. And that's where Bristleback Cloud isn't Nine. really the best hero for lockdown and for actually securing kills. But maybe the Wisp can make up for that with the extra movement speed and mobility from the tether and from the relocate. Yeah, it lets the Bristleback kind of start to snowball, and if he picks up some early kills, then Bristleback can be pretty difficult to deal with. But, of course, it does sort of rely on him getting some of those kills and a bit of a gamble, I think, uh, you could you could say. And I'm trying to look up this Ten game seconds, from uh, yesterday here to see. Now, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm confusing my matches. Now, I don't know who picked up Five Wisp yesterday, but uh, we did see at least one Wisp bristle back uh, a couple weeks ago, and it was uh, an aggro try that Reserve worked out time. okay. It wasn't, wasn't uh, in that particular game, it was just a, a bit of a fail on the opposition that underestimated the power of the bristle back. But I think if you just sort of ignore him for for lack of a better term, and just let him farm a little bit and don't let him get early kills, then it kind of mitigates his scariness. The worst thing you can do is try to contest the try lane and then lose. That's when the Wisp Bristleback just gets out of control and becomes almost impossible to deal with in the yeah. mid-game. Yeah. I'm wondering, at least Cloud9 are considering it, that it's going to be... Are there some dual lanes coming out? Because banning at the CK, they're probably not expecting like necessarily a Wisp a Wisp plus Bristleback mean. combo. You can run something like the Wisp plus one mid, the Bristleback with the Shadow Shaman Dyer in the safe King. lane. Even a Bristleback solo mid isn't isn't going to be too bad here, because he's going to match up against quite likely something like a Brewmaster, which is going to melee on melee there. I don't think either hero really comes out on top. So I think Cloud9 bright in banning a hero like the Cla uh, like the Chaos Knight who can kind of overwhelm them with some early to mid-game aggression. And Tusk gets picked up. Cloud this is, nines turn to this is a kind of cool draft from... Uh, like you say, X Game KZ, they, they entertain, they... They yeah, some cool stuff. So who is that actually on the tusk? He's just tagged up as X Game KZ. Um, who's left over here from their roster? Is that what a Stalker? Yeah, Stalker. Yeah, you're right. So what a fucker on the centaur. I wonder if they'll be switching up their roles here and they'll be doing like a dual lane mid with the uh, IO and Bristleback, or if it will be a centaur <laughs> mid from uh, what a fucker here. Yeah. Yeah, so there's some cool synergy between some of these series. We've got the Snowball in with the Centaur Sun. I mean, it's, it's a pretty annoying kind of draft for Cloud9 in a lot of ways. And they definitely don't want to take mid-game fights. You've got very tanky frontliners in the Bristleback and the Centaur. Even Tusk very elusive because of the Snowball. The Sigil just makes killing heroes off and taking fights really dangerous as well because everyone gets slowed down as well. So uh, I think Cloud9... Uh, Probably go in the right direction with this Naga Siren pick, which is let's split push, let's avoid fights. Yeah, definitely. We'll be Eternal Envy picking him up, so uh, naturally this Naga will be finding a fair bit of farm. Fada will pick up the Brewmaster, probably headed to the mid lane. We'll be Pylai die on the Skywrath, and Owie 2000 will take the Enigma into the jungle. That leaves Bone 7 here for the off lane on the Bat Rider, and he will station himself appropriately there up in the top. X Game KZ, though, they'll start aggressive as five heroes move towards the Radiant Jungle. Looks like they may want to put some wards down to slow down this Enigma. No, actually, they only have two observers with them unless equal. No, no sentries. So maybe they'll block one of these camps, but um, this is just a, just an invade to maybe look for a first blood and 
get some vision control, I guess. I really thought they'd try and block these Enigma camps. Mm. Yeah, going. You've got the Tusk Centaur. You may as well be looking for that first blood, but I wonder. Hmm, they're not going to block off the full camp here. They could have maybe gone for the ward behind tower to get that first blood right off the bat, but they don't really have. Like, they, they've got to win these lanes and get off to a really good start, because otherwise Enigma's just going to be farming the jungle and they're not going to be getting too much done. And they've already been spotted out here. Tusk is right next to an Observer Ward. His Observer Ward gets spotted, so Cloud9 know exactly where X Game have most of their vision right now. The battle yep. begins. And they should come waddling over with a sentry sooner rather than later, I would imagine. And yeah, already Roshan, Baby Courier here, bringing out... Uh, the sentries and Pylai die off to the races here, and it looks like at the Top very lane. least, oh, this gosh. observer will take a tumble. Oh, yeah, Bone 7. He'll be okay. He's got his Firefly. He'll make it to the high ground, but taking a little bit of damage there from the Wisp and Bristle back. Moving into another pause here, but it looks like it will be Bristle and Wisp going to the safe lane. Uh, it will be equal <laughs> in the mid right now on the Shadow Shaman. Uh, Stallcat is here on the Tusk, and what a fuck, it will be headed to the off lane. So they are doing some role reversals here. Yeah. But this I have, is kind of funky. Hmm. I like the Tusk better as a like four position hero. I don't think they should run him as a core. So running the Shadow Shaman mid is pretty much how they fit that in. And this will get the early Serpent Wards, which need to take down a lot of early towers here. These Serpent Wards, I mean, that's why you're on the Shadow Shaman mid. Get the faster level six, get the faster farm for the potential blink initiation. So Shadow Shaman already off to a rough start mid, though, taking a yeah. lot of harass from Fata. That's exactly what I was just thinking. Now, there's a reason we don't see Shadow Shaman mid that often anymore. It's uh, kind of an old school style, and now it's just fallen out of popularity. He's just a little too slow, a little too squishy, and it's pretty difficult for him to control the lane. Even against a melee hero like Brewmaster, he's just so beefy, and he can get up in your face and throw those auto attacks. Get the crits, get the dodges, and we'll see how this works out for X game, but an interesting, interesting opening. Double melee in the off lane, as it looks like Tusk will stay in the lane for a little while. Yep. And Skyrath is such a strong zoning support. Like I don't, it, because it's a two v two lane. He's not going to fully zone them out, but he can do so much damage to them that it makes it really hard for X Game to try and go for kills. And with a Tusk Center lane, you want to go for those kills. But if if the Skyrath mate keeps these heroes down to two thirds HP or even half HP with this Arcane Bolt spam, you don't really want to engage when you're already low HP. So X Game, I feel, want to get like maybe level three, try and be full HP by using all their Tangos and Regen, and then go for a kill. Yeah, Envy still has plenty of tangos though. He's got seven plus a pulled one. So plenty of regeneration on him. He's already picked up a Basilius, so plenty of armor as well. And uh, doing okay in the last hits. He's sitting eight and two, and Tusk and Centaur. I guess Tusk is technically the farmer down here. Neither of them are really farming well, but Tusk three and one, Centaur two and zero. This is very, very awkward from X Game here in this bottom lane. Yeah, well. Uh, farm across the board really favoring Cloud9. Like you've got the Enigma just free farming in the jungle. Batrider actually gets a suicide to the Ancients here. He's level two. He kind of did all he could at top lane, got low HP, ran out of mana, and just efficient play coming out from Bone Seven, even if it does somewhat cripple his stats, his KDR. Oh no, not the stats. What are you gonna do? No, I'm. I, I would suicide more in pub games if it didn't ruin my KDI. Oh no, that's my bad. Now I'm looking at mid, and <laughs> they'll get a first they, blood on the tusk. That's they went in for the snowball kill and it backfired. It yeah. backfired in a bad, bad way. So yeah, Scarrett escapes on 40 HP, and well, with that, X game. This this off lane has kind of been locked, lost, and it wasn't really meant to be an off lane. It was meant to be a lane which uh, uh, they either got kills or at least shut down the Naga Saren's farm, but that has not happened. Yeah, I mean, you can see the natural synergy with the Snowball and bring the Centaur in, you connect with the Hoofstomp, then you can hit him with the Ice, sh ice Shards and you're stuck there into the double edge. And yeah. It has scary potential, but it's just a, a little too cheesy, I guess. And there was almost a kill on the mid lane, that's what I was looking at. Equal got pretty low. Fada didn't want to man up under the tower and not a huge kill potential, but just showing us the power of the Brewmaster. Yeah. Even though Equal is doing okay in CS, he is sitting 14 and five versus the 17 and one Fada. He's still getting harassed quite a bit. And uh, I feel like when you put Rasta mid, it's all about how you use the ultimate. Once he hits level six, uh, you need to use those wards very effectively. And if you're not using them to get kills or get objectives, then uh, that's where the mid Shadow Shaman just becomes a lot of wasted effort. Yeah, I and mean, I feel like I mean, the Shadow Shaman is one. Yeah, he's not. He needs to make sure he gets objective stuns with his level six. But the other heroes were meant to be getting objective stuns. The Tusk, not really happy now. He looks a bit lost. Like he was kind of wandered top. He's now checking runes. 
He can't really gank any lane, and as a Tusk, that's a pretty bad feeling when there's not many heroes that are gankable. Bone Seven's probably the best target, but he's playing very defensive. Unfortunately, Hastron could end his day here. Yeah, you will get hit by the snowballs. The ice shards do slow down his uh, path to retreat. He will get finished off by Stalkat as they dive the tower, but Bada coming in. Pylai die TPs forward, and they might be able to find a return kill here. At least one on the Wisp as he takes a Thunderclap. Now Reeves on the run, has the back turned, but only one point in the Bristleback ability. And there is still a lot of potential for a kill here. Fada will get in the front of him, has a thunderclap coming up, and Reeves doing everything he can to buy his time, but one more auto attack from the Skyrath should be enough to Radiant bring him down. While all this is happening, attack. there's an engagement happening in the bottom lane. Owie moves out of the bottom lane, and uh, or moves into the lane, rather, and will be able to find a kill onto the centaur. Reeves does manage to make it out, so some cheeky <laughs> he footwork. Kicked them. Yeah. We'll keep he, him he, did, he fogged him and then turned back and... Thata was, Thata was chasing him, going for a clap with the body block, but then he turned around and got out of clap rate. Another kill, but I'm like, this time they finally get Envy here. The Wiss had to come in, come in for this one, but killing Envy was essential. He'd already, oh, he was already off to a fantastic start. Actually going for arcane boots on Nagasaran of all things. So hmm. a much more kind of fight oriented build, the arcane boots also just, you can kind of push a bit better because you've got a lot more spam out of the Riptide. So not rushing the Radiance as much as we normally see. Yeah, I wonder if this means he'll totally deter from the Radiance build and just do something completely different, or if this is just a, an odd pit stop here and he'll still try to move into a Radiance in due time. I want to say he might try something different because usually the BOTs are kind of a, a crucial aspect of the, uh, of the Radiance, and it seems pretty inefficient to pick up uh, or pardon me, uh, Arcane Boots just to sell them and pick up BOTs within you know maybe 20 minutes or so. Yeah. Well... Uh, we'll see what the plan's going to be coming out from him. Fata, meanwhile, mid lane, looking for an engagement. Has the ultimate here. Misses the clap, though. Yeah, Ooh, Fata. Without, you know, without connecting on that clap, not going to have much kill potential. Equal is completely out of mana, so perhaps what they were trying to capitalize on. But now Wisp will tether over. Bone 7 Dying rotates in. He is level 5, so no lasso available, but there's your split. Will connect with the boulder onto Equal to secure the rune snatch. And now X game, kind of in retreat mode here Dyer's as the pandas will continue to pursue forward. There's the next boulder out on equal. He'll be the first to go down. Mantis very low on mana, caught inside of the tornado. Brew will go back into panda form. 12 HP left on him, gets sniped by a wisp ball. Dyer's and the uh, ice shards would have been there to finish him off anyhow. Will be a one for one trade for Dyer's now, but a lot of space created down bottom. Envy will find a tower kill. No ball presses forward and bone seven. Might actually be able to make the great escape. Wisp balls on the aggressive, but they'll fall short. And he'll live oh, now. Pylai die coming in. He'll finish off Mantis. And it will end as a one for two trade. X game on the retreat. And Envy, the big winner there as he finishes off a tower. Well, it, X game, they, they manned up. But it was, it was kind of a, a mixed trade in the mid lane. And losing the tower bottom lane definitely makes that exchange go in favor of Cloud9. So <sighs> the big problem for X game is they're just not really getting much farm on the heroes that need it. I think the big one is Waterfucker on the center. He's got 8 CS, not even close to a blink dagger. I think Centaur's blink timing is probably one of the more important things with their lineup. Yeah, now in the mid lane, Equal gets caught inside of the lasso. Nothing oh, the Shadow Shaman can do. The Ends up being an easy kill for Cloud9. Makes it 6-4, to four, but they've got a much larger lead uh, on the graphs, and now I'm sure the net worth is looking pretty scary already. Naga topping the charts. Really the three cores of Cloud9 top of the charts here. Even uh, the Bat Rider just about on par with uh, the position one bristleback of X game. So we haven't talked about Owie too much, but he did move out of the lane down bottom to kill that centaur as we were watching the bristleback using his footwork. He'll be on his way to a very fast mech and almost has it. Uh, just a headdress away here only eight minutes in. Once he gets the mech, Cloud9 can take fights very easily. They can combine that with the Brewmaster Blink Dagger for the good initiation, so... X game need a mech of their own, probably coming on the Bristleback, I want to say. And Bristleback is actually going to catch up on 7 at the top, so. Nice. Nice little pickoffs, one by one. X game will just keep taking what they can get to try to get back in this game. Yeah, not so bad. A kill on the Bat Rider before the Blink will slow down at, uh, that timing, which is good news. Though he's not really going for a Blink Rush either. Going Tranquil Boots and Bottle first. Usually you'll see one Radiant's or the other um, on the attack. Brown Boots into the Blink. So Bone 7 just uh, going for a more sustainable build and uh, not so Radiant worried about getting that Blink fortified. Dagger as quickly as possible. I guess Radiant's recognizing that his team has plenty of attack. other initiation tools and Brewmaster already has his Blink. We're nine minutes in and he's sitting on a Blink Dagger. He's had such a good time mid against Equal. Looking at Equal, he's got brown boots and bottle. He's got absolutely nothing out of this lane, so 
You talked about surf mods. Once you hit level six, seeing them put to good use, well, so far zero use. They need to make something happen. This is a smoke gank coming out. Probably head top look for another kill on Bone Seven or AUI, and they've got to get this tower with those surf mods. Yeah, Bone Seven will just go to farming here on this hard pole camp, and Enigma's here ready to defend. Aoi has the mech. Uh in transit yep on the way via the courier phone seven will get caught in the river though ice shard shackle will have enough to bring him down just barely as he makes it to the high ground so another pickoff for x game onto bone seven crippling that timing even more and of course furthering their farm a little bit but still the tower is defended and that's really what they needed out of that rotation yeah. towards the top lane Equal could have gone top of the Serpent Woods, but he's six around mid, and the fact he's sitting by the Wisp makes me think they may want to go for it. They, they want to defend their tier one mid. If they go top with the Serpent Woods, they lose mid and it's a trade, and I guess they don't feel comfortable trading towers, especially with Envy already off to such a good start. Yeah, and speaking of Envy, he is in free farm heaven down here. X Game have left him to his own devices. Centaur will gallop his way back down towards the bottom, but. Yeah, Envy is topping the CSN net worth chart, and with 2,300 gold, he could actually just be pulling for that relic and wanted a little bit more mana sustainability, but uh, well on his way. There will be a stampede used. I'm not sure really what that was for. What a fuck it will just get caught by an ensnare silence, and he'll go down. Now Envy pops the Song of the Siren as Mantis uses that relocate in. Seven seconds until he heads back. Do they have the damage to bring him down? Riptide will connect, but... Looks like Mantis Dyer's will be just tower. fine. He's Meanwhile, in the mid tank. lane, Brewmaster yeah. dives onto the Shadow Shaman and finds yet another kill. This time, he doesn't even have to commit the Primal Split. This game looking... starting to look pretty disastrous Dyer's for X-Game. They need to try to get this kill top lane. AUI has got the Black Hole. He's going to go for it. Gets two. Snowball will cancel it. Some damage has been done, but... Yeah. That was just a suicide kind of Black Hole. If he got the full duration with the Edelons off, maybe he kills the Wisp, but AUI was Bone dead. Bone 7 was regardless. on his way in, so perhaps thinking that he could get there in time to connect with the Lasso and do some damage with the Firefly, but Batrider without the Blink Dagger really had no gap closer and no way to get there uh, in a timely manner, so Radiant's we'll end up being a... Whoa! Attack. Centaur drops his boots and yeah, sure, he stops it from getting broken, but uh, playing with fire right there. Just one stray auto <laughs> attack from Pylai dying. Those yeah. would have been some dead booties. This centaur, man, he likes to gamble. Well, top lane, top lane. has gone in with the ultimate. Yeah, Mantis will take the boulder. He is destined to fall here. Snowball comes out, and that will buy the Wisp a little bit of time, but, ooh, there's the tornado, and he still will fall. That Wisp is just so squishy at this stage of the game, and now Tusk, left without any mana, he'll be forced to back out, but reinforcements are here. Ward Trap out on the alley, pops the mech, and that will help him out. Buys Fada some time as well to continue the right clicks. On equal, shackles fly through. They find the kill onto Owie, but now Bone Seven as well as uh, Fada just standing their ground, and they'll get cleaned up here as well. It's just too much. The Bristleback is too tanky with that Vanguard pickup, spamming the Quills. He'll find a double kill, and it will end as a two for three exchange. Finally, X Game gets something going their way, and they may be able to grab a tier one tower out of this. Yeah, I was about to go kind of Merlini there and start flaming, well, flaming the Vanguard, but it feels like a mech would have done a lot more because it it does it's very similar cost to the Vanguard. It makes you probably gives about the same amount of survivability, and it helps you out for your team. So I'm surprised he went for the Vanguard over the mech, but hey, it's it's one of a fight. Great use of the Serpent Wards there, and Cloud9 just couldn't get away from the Serpent Wards. First AUI was stuck, then Fata was in the primal split next to them, so he comes out. So it was just a really unfortunate position to take that fight because they had no real retreat mechanic, and as a result, they were just stuck under the Serpent Wards and took too much damage. Yep. So let's glance at the graph here, and that will help level things out a little bit. Still a 5,000 gold, 2,500 experience edge for Cloud9. As we can't forget that whole time while they were fighting up top, still space created for Eternal Envy, who now is at Relic Gold. 3,800 up on him, so he'll still be on point for maybe like a 15-minute Radiance delivery, something like that, as he does buy the Relic right now. So just doing it a little bit differently with the Arcane Boots, but it's proving pretty effective as he's been able to spam Riptide and Mirror Illusions that much more. And uh, he's looking yeah. damn good. Normally you see the bottle, but the Arcane Boots are a nice kind of variation. You don't have the HP regen, but he hasn't been kind of having to jungle. He's had safe farm for the most part. And yeah, he'll get a pretty much a perfect timing on this Radiance. 15 minute Radiance is very hard to deal with. You've got a very farm Bristleback, but you're going to be fighting Illusions. This Radiance Naga is going to be constantly split pushing, constantly farming three, four different neutral camps at a time. And is also going to be farming probably about two to three times faster than the, the Bristleback will get his next Radiance items. Bottom tower yeah, is and under attack. Bristle is just not really equipped to deal with uh, a Radiance in general. He has a Vanguard and a Blade Mail, which will help him tank up against physical Dyer's damage with that magical burn. Just 
Uh, gonna do a, a fair bit to him, and I guess Bristleback aside, all of the other heroes are, are the ones that are more susceptible. Sure, Tusk and the Centaur are pretty tanky, but Wisp as well as the uh, Shadow Shaman will be in some trouble. Also a great tool to disable Blink Daggers. There's one already up on the Centaur, and uh, I'm sure Shadow Shaman will be looking towards one at some point this game. So more good news for Cloud9 as down bottom, X gank group up and start to commence the push. Fod is here, ready to make a defense. Is level 11, has the ultimate and Blink Dagger at the ready. And uh, Centaur actually on the other side of the tree line, ready to hop forward as well. Ice Shards, what a fucka. Hopping, well thinking about jumping forward, but will retreat and now we'll see Cloud9 go for the exchange. They'll go right on to equal. Rasta Wards do come down, that isolates Bone 7 and even though he gets off the lasso, will still fall. The Snowball connects on nothing, but the Pandas, they will finish off Tusk. Now they'll chase down equal and might be able to find at least a two for one trade. Tornado comes out onto the Centaur, that's a dead Shadow Shaman. And Centaur may not get off scot-free either. Bada goes back into brew form and Centaur will blink back to safety. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Reeves going hard on Envy, finds a kill there. Aoi 2000 popped his ultimate, and they got the X Game heroes low, but unable to finish him off as Pylai died going in for that one last Arcane Bolt onto Mantis. It's close, but he can't find it, and will just TP home before Bristol can come in and finish him off. They, they use Song as well, so I'm guessing it was maybe a Song into the Black Hole, and they just didn't have the damage to to kill whoever they went on. But yeah, I was, I was with you watching that bottom fight, and... Whatever happened top did not end well for Cloud9, which is surprising. Song of the Siren, Black Hole both being used, you'd expect the, the fight to go a lot better for them. But next game, probably ca catch a big break there. Slowing down this Radiance is is nice, that's for sure. Yeah, that is a, pretty much the ideal time to kill the Naga. Or I guess killing her before the Relic is good as well, but uh, anything to slow down that Radiance is great news. Now 16 minutes, only 300 gold up on him. That'll delay it by at least another... Uh, two or three minutes based Dyer's on the initial timing we were looking at. So, better news for X game, but they're still just kind of holding steady at the lead that Cloud9 have. And um, as Envy continues to farm, that will accelerate. And I feel like X game just need to get more Radiant's out of these exchanges. Even though they're attack. breaking even now, they need to f start finding some um, objectives and maybe look towards Roche sooner Dyer's rather than later. Tower is under attack. Yeah, and I an Aegis will definitely be nice. It'll allow them to take fights a lot more freely and. They can be split around the map because of the Wis relocate. That's probably the crucial thing, because X game don't have to group up as five. Otherwise, that's where you just straight up lose to Naga Siren. So Wisp actually does fit quite nicely here. Grabbing an Aegis would help out a lot here. And Reeves at top is just so damn tanky. Yeah, they'll pop Stampede. They find Pylai die in the trees. He gets off a Mystic Flare, but he's completely isolated. Will survive the initial onslaught, but not much longer after that. has not been spotted. Yeah. Almost gets found by a Wisp ball. And he'll blink back to safety. Fada with an invisibility rune on will be camping out nearby. But I uh, don't think he'll really want to initiate this. He does have the beginnings of a BKB, so no Ags rush coming for him. But just about halfway to that BKB recipe, and then he'll be there. Does take some Wisp Balls. They know that he's inbound and that there's somebody invisible here. What a fuck it, just throwing a stray hoof stomp. And what a fuck it will be all right, at least for now. Oh, good, good awareness from X Game, realizing. What was going on with the Invis Brewmaster as soon as the Wisp Ball started hitting something, but... Just means Fada backs off, and... More space created for Envy, who's still farming away. This time in the jungle, he doesn't feel it's safe to go to lanes, although his jungle has been warded, so... x -Game could potentially look to try and shut him down there as well. Yeah, he oh, jumped on and throws down the wards, and those are the kind of wards you really need to avoid if you're a solo mid Shadow Shaman. That's a... Pretty important cooldown for your strategy, <laughs> and it also just feeds a lot of gold to Cloud9. They'll basically get two hero kills worth of gold out of that instead of one. Yeah. Bone 7 at top has been caught out now, so this is not been a, a very favorable game for Bone 7 in the offline. He's been getting punished time and time again. Wow, he's 1 7 and 4. He's fallen a lot this game. He has half the kills that X Game have picked up. Oh man, <laughs> he's been on the feed track. Bone Seven normally a very stable offlane player. Like you, you look at Cloud Nine, you, you say, okay, someone's one and seven at twenty minutes of the game, and ninety nine percent of the time, everyone would be like, oh, it's Pylai Die, he's feeding again. Like I mean, Pylai Die creates a lot of space with with his feeding often, but somewhat the joke is that he's feeding. But Bone Seven, yeah, he's he's not had a a good time this game. This Bristleback's fucking massive, too. He's got 10k net worth. Yeah, he has a lot of it in unused gold right now, though. 3,500 of it, so about a third of his net worth is not in his inventory. Uh, it's, yeah, so. He could pick up a relic, but I don't think... I don't know if Radiance is the the best build for Bristleback. Like, I would rather see... 
if you want damage or like the AOE damage, I think Mjolnir is just an all around better item than Radiance. We're here like Bristleback. So mm -hmm. I think if he wants to go that kind of DPS route, he goes, I'd rather see something like a Mjolnir, but I think he needs to tank up more first, even. But yeah, we'll I, I, I think Assault Karas is sort of a natural next item for him because it helps his damage output so much, but also makes him a bit more tanky. Um, he, you know, hopefully, the Centaur will be looking towards a pipe. Um, I don't know. Do you think Bristleback should go the damage route or just go that? sort of super tanky route, so he becomes almost unkillable and the damage just comes out from the massive amount of quills he can spray. I, I think he definitely needs to go damage in some, at some point, whether he gets one more kind of tanky item first, because the quills will fall off their physical damage, and kind of small physical damage, so... Now, oh, you I bottom lane. In trouble, looking to TP out, but they'll break the tree line, equals there with the Hex, and that secures the kill. So X game will regain more momentum and still looking at the golden experience graph. Even though Cloud9 are losing heroes uh, kind of left and right around the map, it still isn't really that costly. It's a lot of space creation and Envy has had a lot of mo a room to move around. They've still found some uh, tower kills as uh, X game gets the bottom tier one. That group up up top. Watafaka comes in with a stampede. There's your relocate. Pylai die will get left behind. And he'll be the next to fall. It's a two for nil across the map. They throw some ice shards looking for Fada, but he's already blinked back to safety. And he does now have a BKB complete. So even if he gets caught, he will have a get out of jail free card. But Naga, Song of the Siren at the ready. Bone 7 as well with a lasso. They'll hop forward onto Watafaka. He uses a double edge on the creeps right as they jump on him, and that'll make things even easier for uh, Cloud9 there. Next game, counter They have another relocate. They're going to lose another as well, Stalkat. Caught up by the lasso, flame break back, it'll be close, but I think the Radiance Illusions with one more Riptide probably get the kill. Radiance alone, uh, that'll get Stalkat. Yep, and we'll go into the snowball, the frozen sigil making things a little bit more difficult to close the gap, but uh, yeah, he will go down to the burn of Eternal Envy, Dyer's and that will be now a, another a two for one going the other way. Dyer's the Brewmaster got picked off down bottom as we were watching that. And it looks like he was ro re relocated down and maybe some Rost awards came down. No, just, hmm, did you catch that one? Attack. I no, miss. <laughs> not sure what happened. He even had a BKB. I don't know if he bought the BKB post death, but no, he had it before. Then he had it up in the yeah. top lane. He didn't use With it. The, either. Still on the ten second charge. Rasta blink hex initiation probably probably caught him out there. So X game do have ways of dealing with this BKB pickup. So yeah. Well, on spiritual back. Spiritual back is going for the Mjolnir. I I like this pickup. I was I, I think it's like the best damage item you can get. Whether he got it now or as his like next big item. This is this is really scary. Like his damage output's insane. And after this, maybe you go hard of Taras for just raw HP or the assault. I think the assault crest. It, I think your HP. I think you're better off getting HP, and then the assault crest is your final item. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Just because he's you're against Skyrath Mage, you're against Radiance, you're against all the magic damage, and that's where even a BKB. I feel in BKB into AC may be the the next item of choice for Reeves. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, even a Heart of Tarrasque might not be a, a bad next stop for him. Centaur has now picked up his four staff following the Blink Dagger. Wisp is working on a mech, has the recipe and the buckler, and now just a headdresser away as well. Uh, the Tusk still hasn't found a hell of a lot, but Shadow Shaman did pick up his Blink Dagger, so maybe that's how they caught the Brewmaster off guard as he does now have some long-range initiation. X game will lose another tower here in the mid. They don't find the deny, and it will fall to the Radiant. So they only have two outer towers remaining, and now we'll see initiation on the equal. Bone 7 hops forward, catches him in the lasso. Mystic Flare completely off the mark, but still enough to bring down the Shadow Shaman. A lot of return damage, though, as the Centaur comes in. A double kill from Watafaka uh, onto the Skywrath as well as the Enigma. Song of the Siren to help reset things. But now Eternal Envy's in trouble. He'll take a Walrus Punch. And this is a triple kill now for Watafaka. A two for three exchange. The Brew will go back into Panda form here, and he'll try to make the retreat. Bone 7, this, left this all by... This just panned up. Yeah. And now, oh, they'll actually reinitiate re here. Almost finish off the Tusk, but he goes into Snowball. That'll reset things. That'll keep him alive just long enough. They finish off Bone 7, and now they bring down Brewmaster. <laughs> it's a full team wipe. Oh, gosh. Oh Cloud, or Cloud 7, they're in some trouble. Yeah. Uh, Centaur got a lot of those kills, but Bristleback did ridiculous amounts of damage with the blade mail the mignonia the brewmaster threw him up like after the fight was already lost like you've got a cyclone this bristle back instantly or the fight's just over he is just tearing apart cloud nine right now nagasara needs to play i, I think after that fight cloud nine realized like we can't fight this bristle back is he's bristle god right now they've just got to avoid fights and split push with the nagasara right now 
Yeah, they, they simply just can't take a 5v5 engagement, and that's even without the mech. Wisp has it now, and in the next team fight, they'll have that extra bit of sustainability, and particularly potent on the Wisp, you can do that cheeky little double heal to the tethered unit. So if that's the Bristleback, whoever else is getting focused hard, things will be even more difficult next to go around. Now X game move right into the Roche pit. They commit the Rost Awards, and with Bristleback, they'll be able to drop Roche's armor with that sticky goo, and this should be a pretty easy Roche. Cloud9 getting in position to contest. There is a black hole still available, so maybe they can do it. Bone7 looking for an Aegis Snatch, perhaps, but no, doesn't even roll the dice, and it will be a, an essentially uncontested Roche. Bristleback, the one to grab the Aegis. So now, they couldn't kill him once. How the hell are they going to kill him twice? That is... A good question. I think they're going to be not looking to fight this guy for a long time here. They have got, like I mean, you mentioned earlier, the magic damage output from Mystic Flare from Midnight Pulse is there, but oh, the smoke's been detected, and yeah. I, I think Cloud9 run. You, they only see one or two heroes here with the Bristleback, but I think Bristleback just one v fives them if he really wants to. Dyer's top yeah, tower. and they will so. just pop the song to make the retreat and. Now Envy does split the boots, he grabs his BOTs as the first item after Radiance, and now just holding on to a casual energy booster. And this is where the early Arcane boots, I guess still a worthy investment, but now you're stuck with this energy booster that doesn't really give you a hell of a lot in terms of what Naga's looking for as a carry. 2800 gold up on him, but we'll see where he goes yeah. from here. And the energy boost is okay, he'll, he'll sell it eventually, it's more just like... He doesn't need the item slot yet, so he doesn't want... I mean, 500 gold isn't really worth selling, so... Yeah, and he will pick up the Yasha now, so transitioning to a pretty standard yeah. carry Naga build with all of the uh, mobility items. Yeah, in the end, the, the Arcane Boots definitely paid for... They paid for themselves and more, so I think having the energy booster there, it, it kind of looks like, oh, he's got an energy booster, what's he doing? But it's like, he'll sell it eventually, and hey, he's, he loses 500 gold on an item that got him more than 500 gold. Yeah, but... Well, now glancing at the graphs, X Game have finally put a dent in the gold lead and uh, are holding a pretty significant experience edge as well. The tower count has been leveled out pretty much. Uh, one advantage for Cloud9 right now. And uh, BKB has been picked up on the Enigma, Dyer's so that's another tower. big item going attack. their way. And X Game do not have anything that will cut through the BKB. So, good news for Aoi2000. Maybe he'll be able to get one of those huge Radiant's black holes to turn this game around. Were the Naga farming at this Dyer's rate, even though X Game are doing attack. very well right now, I think they'd be well advised they, to stay aggressive, as Naga could still turn this one around. They have got Walrus Punch, which goes through the BKB hole, but you have to, like, be in the right... With a Blink Dagger, he Dyer's could potentially cancel a black BKB black hole, but Radiant's it's not yeah. easy. Yeah, that's, that's a fair point. That's, uh, I forgot about that one, actually. Radiant's it does go through BKB. It's, yeah, it's a pretty... The it melee range interrupts are yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty difficult to use that one to interrupt a black hole. Fair point. They will trade tier two for tier two, and now X Game just goes straight for the high ground. They saw the glyph burned on the tier two, and they will put Rasta Wards down. They need to be somewhat careful as the midnight pulse flies, and at the very least, they'll find half damage on this tier three and a favorable exchange for them. And with Rasta Wards, they can just kind of rinse and repeat. Reeves with the Aegis online will go into the front line, turn his back, and just start shopping away at the tower. Does take the Drunken Haze, and that'll make things a little bit more difficult. But now the Stampede, they'll find Owie, and they cut him down before the fight even starts. Instant buyback from him. They find a counter kill on the Shadow Shaman with a Mystic Flare as Envy presses forward. Bone 7 with a Flame Break pushes what a fuck it back, and they will find a kill there. So it is a 5v3 on the field. The Primal Split off to the side does isolate the Tusk. He's forced to snowball in, then will blink back to safety. Bristleback gets isolated by the Yules, turns his back and tries to make a run for it, but he will fall for the first time. Now Aegis. Will get procced, and X game seem to be completely repelled here. They can relocate him out here. Wisp does have to relocate. He's thinking about it. Envy will fall to the bristle. And now the tether forward. Maybe they can still turn this around. Highlight really die goes down as well. Owie looking for a potential dieback here. Pops the mech and the BKB still has the black hole, but he has to turn tail and run. More buybacks coming from Cloud9 now. Eternal Envy as well as Pi forced to buy back to make this hold. It will prove effective as they finally bring down the raid boss Bristleback, but that was not a cost-effective hold for Cloud9 as it takes three buybacks to take down the Aegis and get a couple of recovery kills. Yeah, they, they do what they have to, but yeah, that was expensive. Bristleback does give him a beyond godlike streak. He gave up 1,400 or so gold, so that gets split between the Enigma and the Naga Siren, giving them some of that buyback back, but here comes the BKB. This is... That was the one thing, as I was watching that fight, I was just thinking, like, imagine if X game had BKBs. The Bristleback, so he doesn't get Drunken Haze, so he doesn't get Cyclone. And the Centaur, I feel, really needs him. I feel like BKB would offer him a lot more than this Reaver pickup, which is going to build into a heart. If he had BKB there, 
He doesn't die to the Skyrath, and he does a lot more in a five. Yeah, they'll stampede looking for a potential kill, but Cloud9 position themselves appropriately, and they'll make it back to safety. Wasted stampede, but not a huge deal there. And Bristleback is still top in the charts in uh, that number one farm. You mentioned that BKB he picked up. And following that last fight, Eternal Envy did grab himself the Manta style. And another fight may break out here around the dire bottom tier two. No, Cloud9 just feigning some pressure there, but ultimately will back off. Well, this is going to be a game of execute. For Cloud9, they have to execute so well to win this game now. Like, they're going to have to just be split pushing out lanes. If X game ever go for a push, they need to be losing towers and just infrastructure on other sides of the map, which Naga Siren's going to be in charge of. Naga Siren needs, like, the next item as soon as possible as well. Probably going to see how to Tras coming up just for the make the illusions as tanky as possible. And X game may want to wait the next Roshan, but after forcing out all those buybacks, this is kind of like a little opening where they can go for another fight with the BKB on Bristleback and potentially do a lot of damage here. Yeah, and if they just take a couple of pickoffs, if they catch the Naga now, she doesn't have buyback. This could be pretty bad for Cloud9 since they have the Rasta. That means flash pushing towers is certainly an option. And yeah, this is getting a little bit scary for Cloud9. Dyer's They're definitely out of their comfort zone attack. right now. But X game will be a little more passive for the moment. You're looking for the right opening here as Reeves goes to defend the top lane. And Naga just continues to farm with the illusions. And this is one thing that Naga can do very well is just cut the lanes and exactly what he's doing here in the mid lane. Intercept the flow of the creeps, and it just makes it more difficult for X game to defend and constantly keeps creeps shoving into their base and knocking on their front door. Yeah, top and mid lane is constantly pushed out well, well past the river, which is really frustrating for X game because they don't, they're kind of forced to just sit back, defend. They are getting their farm up, like they're farming in multiple heroes across the map. So these lanes pushing out is bringing the, the farm to them, but it's still a case where it's they probably don't feel like their lineup gets too much stronger. Like They can get a heart, maybe a BKB on the Centaur. They can get, other than that, like an Aghanim Scepter on the Shadow's Charmer, but that's about all their lineup does. Fata will get caught out bottom jungle, though. Yep, and Batrider almost gets caught in the top lane. Fata falls there and thought they were going to find the kill on the Batrider. That's what I was looking at, but we'll catch the tail end of Brewmaster here. And that's... rough stuff for Cloud9. Maybe this is that window that X game we're waiting for if they can group up and find a push somewhere. Illusion still continuing to be an irritant. And yeah, equal. Making the smart choice to TP home here as they start to converge on him in the bottom lane. X game are playing this really smart. Like, that was just equal. He was solo pushing the bot. Like, they need to push out late. Like, that's kind of the, the starting concept against the Naga Siren. So equal does it bottom lane. And if he finds a hero, he can actually fight them because he has backup coming from the relocate in. So he finds the Brewmaster there with a Hex Wards. And he knows he's got the backup from the Wisp and that he can actually kill a hero like Brewmaster, even with the BKB there. Yeah. Bristol's farm still very impressive, though. Staying blow for blow with Envy, even though he's had pretty much run of his jungle. And the lanes, another 3,000 gold up on him. We'll be curious to see where he goes next. If he moves into a heart to start tanking up, maybe he looks for some evasion. But uh, I think at this point, some raw HP would certainly do him well yeah. to deal with the Bristleback. Yeah, heart AC, I, the, really the two items I think that make the most sense here. One or the other here. Centaur, speaking of hearts, finishes his. I still think he needs the BKB. Uh, he does have a lot of raw HP, so like last few fights he's been dying just from the magic damage of the Midnight Pulse, the Skyrath Mystic Flare which the heart will help with, but he doesn't really have a blade mail to blade mail against the Skywrath. He doesn't... Uh, he's still killable even with this heart. Yeah, definitely. Now a BKB is up on the Bat Rider, so that's the third BKB on the Radiant side. Uh, Bat Rider, Enigma, and uh, the Brewmaster have all picked up there, so wasn't enough to keep Fado alive, and a couple of times now he's been caught out, and that BKB just hasn't been enough to ensure his survival, as they have plenty of initiation and lockdowns to get you low before you can BKB. But X game now hovering around the Roche pit. I think they're hoping it'll be a quick respawn, but they won't be so lucky. It will be a lengthier one, and they will start to rotate. Uh, looks like down bottom once again, where they've already done considerable damage to this tier 3 tower, and uh, try and make yet another push. They've actually got some time. Like, for... This is... They can do damage to the tier 3 and potentially Raxus here, with Cloud9 not really pushing out middle or top hard enough. Middle is very close to the tier 3s, but uh, there's not enough pressure onto the actual tier 3s or Raxus that X game have to back right now. If they can get the tier 3 tower quickly, they can still TP back to defend, but the safer option is always going to be TP back push out lanes, but it looks like they want to take a chance and go for the high ground push. Yeah. 
There's a glyph available, and of course, Black Hole, all of the big cooldowns for Cloud9. They will start off with the lasso on the evil. He's the target with the wards, and he will go down before he can get the ultimate off. Now X game will be completely repelled. There's no point in commencing this push if your pushing hero is dead, and that's how Cloud9 need to defend. Great plays from Bone7, catches him off guard, and an easy hold with just one hero kill. Yeah, uh, Shaman, that was a bit sloppy positioning from him. Maybe he was expecting there to be like a Wisp relocate save from behind, as you can use that relocate to negate the lasso, but not not good for X-Game. They lose a lot of map control out of that. They stop applying pressure, and Cloud9 will smoke up, probably worried about a Roshan, or maybe even trying to take Roshan. Nah, eh, they can't really Rosh too easily, so they just want to make sure that X-Game aren't Roshing themselves, and they'll see they're not, and then they'll go for some pickoffs here. Yeah. They can't rush easily, but they can contest very easily. With the Song of the Siren, they can always come in for a, a quick little snipe if they can bring down Roche. And with Bat Rider, he is pretty good at hopping in for a potential Aegis steal. And here we'll see Initiation break out. Eternal Envy with Song of the Siren as soon as the Stampede is deployed. Setting up for the Black Hole. Owie with the BKB already used. Mantis will be the first to go down as they set up the Mystic Flare on top of it. BKB now uh, will get uh, interrupted as the Walrus Punch flies through. Wisp will actually buy back, so only one kill out of all that setup from Cloud9. Now they're on the back foot. Owie will get left behind, and he will be the first to go down, it looks like. Actually, the Skywrath Mage falls, but they will get taken out. Batrider finds a solo kill on Stallcat while we're watching the Enigma get picked off. Still, essentially a two-for-two two trade with the buyback from the Wisp. X Game will press forward now, and looks like their sights are set on the bottom, knowing these big cooldowns from Cloud9 have all been expended. Well, yeah, the black hole in the primal split, the <laughs> sleep has that 60 second cooldown, will be up soon, but yeah, I think this is, oh no, they're going to go back to Roche. Roche uh, okay. They go for the safer option. It's it's so hard to push high ground against the illusions, like the lanes are going to be pushed out, they're going to creep skip. They probably feel they just have to kind of play this farming game and defend push out lanes, which is, well, which is going to lead to them getting an Aegis once again. I don't even know if he won it on the Bristleback, he's so unkillable in these fights, he'll take it anyways, which just allows him to be a bit more reckless, like if you want to try push bottom lane, he can just be solo on the high ground pushing without having to worry about going down. But mm -hmm. and there's his um, assault Karas completed yeah. following that. That's the other thing. Fight. It means he doesn't have to save buyback money desperately. Like if he buys the AC and doesn't have Aegis and somehow dies, you lose the game. Yeah. Now Eternal Envy has invested that gold into a level two defusal, just upgrades it straight away. So now has some feedback on the field. And he is starting to do more damage, but he's still not particularly tanky. And if he overcommits, he will be very susceptible. Bone7 gets caught out once more, and nowhere for him to go as he gets stunlocked and double-edged by the Centaur. That'll be an easy pick-off, and again, opening up a little bit of space for X-Game now with a uh, hero advantage on the field. I don't think they'll be able to do too much with it as they're not even close to the enemy base, but maybe they can find one of these Tier 2 towers. They don't have to keep going for this Tier 3 down bottom. They still have two more Tier 2s to work with to get a little bit of extra gold yeah. boost and some more map control. Yeah, the map control is the big... Like, you get a pick-off for it now, you're not getting a Rax, you're not winning the game. You you want map control, which is they do a bit of dewarding, and getting those Tier 2s helps a lot. Like like you say, the map control is good. It just gives Cloud9 just one less place to TP to. It, it makes it much riskier for Cloud9 to push out lanes as well because they can't have the easy Dyer's TP support. But they're losing a Tier 2 bottom, so they definitely want to and kind of need to be making a trade somewhere on the map. Yeah, now they need to be careful, though, as Naga Illusions will press towards uh, the Tier 3 in the top lane. Wisp will relocate, or the bottom lane, rather. Wisp yeah. will relocate the Bristleback. They'll clear up the Creep Wave. And uh, then we'll see if they go back together. Nope, Tether will break, and it's just Wisp that goes back towards top. And, uh, I'm not sure if we'll, that was the plan. But. Yeah, we'll see if X Game can get a tower out of this, but it seems like it will just be a free Tier 2 tower for uh, Cloud9. Shadow Shaman does find uh, an Aghanim Scepter, though, and he's close to level 16, so of course Roster Ward's now getting that much more potent. Well, if, if he gets to cast them. Ras has had a, a really tough game. It's it's definitely not a lineup that's been fun to verse, but he's been getting caught out, not getting Serpent Wards off, and just had a few good Blink Hex initiations to kill off Fata, but he him getting off his spells is going to be like one of those kind of make or break points in a team fight. For Cloud9, he's often going to be the kind of target they try and, and focus first. Yep. And... Yeah, also given that he has a Blink Dagger, I feel like Equal has to sit very far back, and he has the luxury of having the tools to do so. I mean, he can just sit back in these fights and Blink forward after the initiation really starts. In the last fight, he was kind of right in the middle of the pack, and there's just really no reason for him to be there. Sure, he's a good initiator if he can hop in with the Hex, but they have the Centaur for that. And he's the tanky one now. He also has an escape mechanism with the Force Staff, so just let Wadafaka and the uh, Bristleback be up in the front lines, and... 
sit back and wait for that opening to get the Rost Awards down. Well, I think it's just got a whole lot harder for X game. And he picks up his heart, which adds a full 1k HP to himself as well as all of his illusions. So he just... That, this is a really big jump for the Naga Siren, and this suddenly makes... I, don't, I mean, for X Games, like, they can still teamfight versus Naga. Naga's damage output isn't that scary. Uh, the level 2 Diffusal does give you some good damage output, but nothing compared to what Brissabek offers, so... It means Envy can just kind of split push a lot more fearlessly because he's so much harder to kill. Yeah, he'll go straight into the tier three in the top lane, and Rasta Wars are deployed before the fight even really starts. Reef still in the front lines. Blitz come out on both sides of the coin, and it will be X game to get the tier three tower. I think they want to get Raxes and try relocate back to defend. Yeah, they may try it, but uh, Illusions in the mid actually doing some damage to that tier three, and Envy himself will finish off the top tier three tower. Rax in the bottom lane, go down. Primal Split comes out from Fada's Brewmaster. Tosses a boulder onto Mantis. They cancelled Envy's TP. Oh, no, no, Envy got out. Just, Centaur was like half a second too late to cancel it. Yep, and now we'll see if X Game can actually make the escape here. Mantis gets stunned up, uh, stunned up once more, pops the mech. Reeves just getting crowd controlled right now. They know he has the Aegis. They don't want to focus him, but now they'll be forced to. Eo goes down, and Reeves takes a silence. Mystic Flare, that'll be his first life. Coming right back with the Aegis. Black Hole is available here, and Owie thinking about using it. Bone 7 connects with a lasso on the Stallcat. Reeves will get caught inside of the Black Hole, as will Stallcat, and they will get cleaned up. So Cloud9 finds some recovery kills here, but they did lose that bottom lane of Rax and only got a Tier 3 tower. Considerable damage on the top lane. And actually, this Hero Siege Creep about to finish off the Range Rax as Centaur desperately tries to chop him down. Will keep it standing, but a pretty decent trade for X Game. Yeah, I, I think it's okay. Like, they got the Rax as what they came for. And if, if they can do that again, it's decent. But for Cloud9, they got... They actually got a second... T they got T3 mid and T3 top. So these lanes both very exposed. And if that if that goes exactly the same next time, next time it's top and middle Rax is taking a lot of damage. So we suddenly... I'd say it's a very close to even trade. Even though Cloud9 don't get Raxes, I think they still are in an okay position. Like, this is still a very 50-50 game. It's going to come down to lively execution and, uh, like, whether the split push from Cloud9 catches X game off guard. So I don't, I don't think it, it put X game in a position where they're suddenly a lot closer to winning the game, just getting Raxes. Yeah, here in the mid lane, we'll see that before our eyes as Stampede is used. Equal, taking some pretty heavy damage, but uh, will survive as the Nog Illusions get cleaned up. Envy was also able to get two Tier 3 towers out of his split pushing there. He got yeah. the Tier 3 in the mid as well as all that damage on the top. So that also does help it's out rich. Cloud9's <laughs> ability to, to oh push God. in future endeavors. And yeah, look at that net worth jump. All of a sudden, Envy is a big gap on top of the uh, Bristleback where Bristle was actually leading not too long ago. Yeah. Probably a butterfly next, just for the illusion damage. Like if he's like, if he's in that position where it was just in where he was trading those tier threes for bottom for the bottom raxes. If he had butterfly there, he does a lot more damage. Uh, the illusions as well as himself. So uh, imagine it's gonna be a butterfly. At the same time, he's, he's you've got to say bye back. This is the stage of the game where you don't want one pick off to lose your team in the game. Yeah, and that's one of the problems with that late game Naga. It's a lot of eggs in the Naga basket. She has a very considerable amount of the Cloud9 net worth overall, but still in, in pretty good shape. Fada has now picked up an Assault Karas, so uh, smart choice there is it will negate the AC of the Bristleback and just give the team some more armor in general. Uh, Bone7, he's got his Mask of Badness here, one of his signature builds, but a lot of movement speed up on him. So now if someone gets caught in the lasso, they can be pulled into no man's land and then some, as he'll be cruising around. And with a BKB still at 8 seconds, he can stay pretty safe while doing it. And not it's much. tough for X game because I feel like they need to get the the when they're pushing like Naga Siren aside, I feel like they need to get the initiation to kill someone like Brumas with like a blink stun, chain disable him down, kill him off because he's got the AC, the Vlads, and the annoying primal split. But it's been mostly Cloud Nine getting in the initiation with Bone Seven. Yeah. It looks like X game will start to group up about the top lane, considering their options, but. At this point, even the tier two towers are an even push. I think are an, an easy push. I think Cloud Nine can take a straight up 5v5 engagement now much easier than they could uh, maybe 10-15 minutes ago when we last spoke about it especially now that Naga is getting to that critical mass point almost 6,000 gold up on Envy still with this huge inventory yeah TP stops so they do recognize potential push coming here bone 7 oh he's caught what a fucker yeah and Centaur will get completely isolated here Snowball oh, comes in and that will keep him alive at Aoi 2000. Pops his BKB, has a black hole available, just needs to find the appropriate opening here. Cloud9 on the back foot, and they are going to get split into two fights. 
Now down on this side, Fada will go blow for blow with Reeves. And around the back side, Envy and Pylai Die will stay alive. They'll finish off Wadafaka. He'll buy back. Song of the Siren gets popped, and Panda will split. Not much damage they can do here, but looking for the setup. There's a gem on the ground. Oh, Owie, he gets hexed. Oh, no. Oh. Equal with the big plays. Owie is completely locked down. Rasta Wards come out, and Cloud9 now taking a lot of damage. Naga Siren is starting to just clean it up, though. We'll finish off the Tusk as well as the Bristle back. Down goes the Shadow Shaman. It's just the Wisp and the Centaur. Wisp will fall, and this is the buyback from Wadafaka. Ultra kill for Envy. Very well could be a Rampage as he goes blow for blow with Wadafaka. Gets four staff back to safety, and this Centaur might be big, but not big enough. Now caught inside of a lasso. Bone 7 will just hold him in place, and they want this Rampage on Envy, though. He needs to be careful. He'll be forced to slither his way back to safety. And X game, it looked like they might be able to take a big fight there. Beautiful at plays from the Shadow Shaman, but Envy just too big in the end. Yeah, I, when that black hole, it didn't get so much. It never actually came off. First the Tusk Snowball Stun, and then equal with the Hex right after. Like that, He was mid-cast animation of a huge black hole that would have just destroyed X game, but it doesn't even matter, and with that... It's buyback o'clock. XM have to buy back or just lose the game right now because they're going to see their mid and top lane under a lot of pressure. Yeah, Bristle buys back, but can he do this by himself? It's just him and Tusk, and like you mentioned, the split push is certainly a reality. They have the glyph, so that will buy them some time. Reeves will be able to clear it up, and all right, they will be repelled. Envy just pops the ultimate and walks away. He was he was trying to like position his sleep such that it slept the bristle back but not didn't make the racks invulnerable because the, the sleep if it's in range of the raxes so if you get like the circle right before the raxes you could i think he was thinking you'd get the melee racks while sleeping bristle back but the illusions died in Al almost a big play from mp <laughs> almost but yeah the other problem here for x game is Aoi didn't burn the uh, black hole so they still lost the fight with the black hole online and cloud nine could be looking to contest this roche Looking at vision, they have no visual confirmation, but if they want to do it, they'll have to start moving very quickly. With that minus armor, Roche falls fast. They'll start moving in that direction as they smoke up, but it'll just be too little too late. Aegis and Cheese will go the way of next game. It is Eo this time that grabs the Aegis, and Cheese goes the way of Tusk. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Wisp is just so important in these fights. Like, he keeps the, he makes the Bristle back so much tankier, so much stronger with the Overcharge. Uh, and he's getting focused first almost every single fight, him or Equal. So, uh, if, if once Equal's got down the Serpent Ward, thrown a Hex or two, he's got the blink positioning. I think Wiss having Aegis is fine. And uh, yeah. Reeves, he picks up a Basher. He knows he needs more damage, more just high impact in these team fights. So, the, the problem is when he has the Aegis, like his team's already all dead. So, he, di he dies, he respawns, he probably just dies a second time. But keeping the Wiss alive with the Aegis, I, it's very unorthodox, but I think it's the right move. Yeah, what a fucker will get initiated on now. The lasso to start things off. There is a snowball, and what a fucker will eat the cheese. That'll bring him right back up. Song of the Siren. As Stallcat does snowball forward, and they're looking for this black hole setup. Alley brings down the Midnight Pulse, but X game just That's too good, spread bro. out and won't be able to find the black hole he's looking for. And C9 will just reset for now. I guess happy that they forced out the cheese and will just back up. They're oh, not done yet, chasing. though. Hastrune on equal. He catches Owie. That's another Hex. Set of Mass Serpent Wards, and Enigma will fall once more as he gets left behind. <laughs> hmm. Okay. That's... <laughs> They've... They're still in this game. X, X game. It's it's tricky for them. I mean, they're upper racks, but they've just got no real good way of breaking the base. They've also still struggling just to deal with the constant pressure coming from Envy in all the lanes. Envy who has completed his butterflies, so... Yeah. They're going to go for it up top, Radiant's and top this is, is under I think, just going to be a tier 2 tower. I think pushing high ground is going to be a bit tricky for them. Uh, Enigma has a buyback, so that's if they see Enigma buyback, they just, they're going to run. Yeah, I mean, forcing out the Enigma buyback is is good, but I guess Radiant's that will slow down his refresher, so it would be good. They're not even going to go for it, though. Yeah. I think they, they probably know Enigma has buyback, and they also, even if Enigma doesn't have buyback, they're... They're losing other lanes. Yeah, now Bone 7. He's just trying to buy time here as Envy pushes into the base. He will uh, concede a death. I think he might be able to find a kill there. But will go down. They force out the Glyph. Envy does get the ranged Drax in the top lane. And a little bit of chunk damage to the melee in the mid. But that was the, like, 50 HP range Drax. So that was... Yeah. Eh, that was a lost cause. Yep. And he finds a Courier pick off. So a little bit of a gold boost for Cloud9. Bone 7 sacrifices oh. himself, and I think Meanwhile, Mantis is kind of worth oh, it. Oh, he's going to lose the Aegis, maybe. Ma yeah, Mantis, unfortunately, here will get left behind, and. He relocated back to defend, and then he just. Yeah. He's kind of on his own. Now he will get silenced, and they should be able to bring him down pretty oh, easily. Man. That's a completely wasted Aegis. They ate the cheese in the last fight, so. All of their spoils from Third Roche have now 
been completely yeah. expired. Normally, that was like losing a wisp there to relocate to defend and be like, oh, it's a wisp. But when he's got the Aegis, it means not having the Aegis in the next team fight. It actually makes that wisp kill pretty pretty big. For for Cloud Nine, it just yeah. gives him Cloud Nine. It's all about breathing room. Like knowing that there's no Aegis on the wisp means that it's less likely X game are gonna be able to push and break your base. Like right now, Cloud Nine are like, well, if we defend, we're probably not losing this game. But they've also got to find a way to break through X game, which right now is probably the tricky part. Yeah, and at this point, Naga Siren is basically 6 slotted. 3,500 net worth, 6,000 gold on Envy. I guess you can look at dumping the Diffusal Blade into something else at this point, but um, I don't know. What do you think? What is is there any room for improvement in this Naga inventory? I think I think you go for like the 7, 8 slotted Naga, like have a refresher on a Courier, have like Necro Book 3 on the yeah. Courier, like these kind of cheeky en Envy style plays, which is having 7th and 8th items just on the Courier. You may need to buy a new Diffusal. I think Diffusal's, you want to have it. It gives you a lot of, your Illusions a ton of extra damage output because uh, all your Illusions get the Mana Break. And level 2 Diffusal, the Mana Break does quite a lot of extra damage. So mm -hmm. you definitely want to keep the Diffusal. But at some point, if he's got the money, he may just rebuy it for extra Purge charges. Although Purge is, yeah, it's, it's not, I mean, it's not the end, end of the world here. Yeah, no, it's not really game breaking. It helps when folks are trying to get away, but... Could use it on teammates if they get hexed up by Shaman, so there's yeah, there's true. just potential for Purge to like win you a team fight. It's just uncommon. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, Aoi 2000 has been the target of the Hex quite a few times in the last skirmishes, so maybe a really clutch cleanse can allow him to turn around with a big black hole and take a successful team fight. but you're certainly right about the damage on the Illusions. Of, of all of his items, I feel like that would be the one to go if you wanted to upgrade into like a Scotty or something from here, um, but yeah, he's he's pretty much capped out. Yeah. So Cloud9 can sit back and turtle up. Maybe they'll just want to wait for Aoi to grab his refresher. And now he's not far away. 3,600 gold. Already has a Perseverance. May want to keep pulling for buyback, so he'll delay it a little bit longer. But that is a very scary item that has potential to be game-breaking. Well, this is where all the luxury items comes out. Like Basher on Fata. I mean, this is just... <laughs> it, it's kind of crazy how the items like you just rarely see on Heroes at this stage of the game. But... Yep. For, for Cloud9, they're, they're feeling pretty comfortable even down the bottom racks this year. They know this Bristleback is really, I mean, he peaked a long time ago. So they've got they've got items coming. The Refresher Orb on AOI, this is a big one. This just allows him to be a huge threat, it, especially if he can farm a buyback as well. Because even if he uses one black hole in a team fight, he dies. He can buy back, pop the Refresher, and have it for like a defense. And with a Refresher Enigma with a buyback, you just can't push into Cloud9. Yeah, they're looking for Pylai, die up top, what a fucker will find him, they stampede, blink forward, and Skyrath will use his Ghost Scepter, turns and throws a Mystic Flare onto Mantis, not enough for the kill, and it will just be a one for nil exchange here in the top lane, not a bad pick for X game, but um, not particularly game breaking either, oh, oh, Song of the Siren, they're all clumped up, can Owie get here in time? This has potential to be far. a huge black hole, but he just can't get there. Oh no, opportunity missed, but Bone7 does connect with the lasso. There's the black holes, they stay grouped up! Oh, my Lanta, he even has the refresher as well. It's gonna be a back-to-back -back black hole if he can find the mana for it. And that might be the nail in the coffin for X game. What a fuck, it will try to make the escape, but I don't think that'll happen. Wisp will buy back here. Oh, it's got buy back. That's, I mean, it's one of those things where... Like for X game, they're just gonna keep on trying to push in, but it's never gonna work. And even if they, they push like that fails, hey look, they buy back, they're still in the game, but... They're not really accomplishing anything. They're just falling further and further behind. And even if they hold on to their Raxes now, it's there's no real end game where they're winning. It right? feels like right now, Shadow Shaman does have refresh. He's going to catch AUI in the jungle. That's a huge kill because he had he popped his refresher. He was looking to come with another black hole. Yeah, and a lot of buybacks burned on the dire side. X Games still might be able to hold here. They don't have a cliff for another few moments. But Song of the Siren from Envy that will allow them to make an easy retreat. And with Aoi he's dead. getting the Rax. He's getting the Rax with the song. Oh. He TP too. I mean, yeah. He had to TP, otherwise the song was wearing off. But yep, almost. But yeah, that you know? Shadow Shaman. I saw the invisibility rune and thought, okay, this is going to be cheeky, but it does actually allow them to defend the base and take very minimal losses. It will not be a cheap hold, though. Is basically everyone on the dire that had a buyback was first to forced to burn it. I, I, I'm when I see him, like that's the second time he's trying to do that with the mid rack. I bet he knows the exact like pixel he needs to be standing on, such that his illusions can hit the racks while like being just outside of the racks being just outside of the sleep range. Like that, once again, he was like really close to the racks. His illusions are hitting it, and all the heroes are slept. So, Envy's like 
perfect with his positioning when he goes for that play. Yeah, very well practiced. Next game, are they going all in here? They'll take out the tier two tower in the mid, and they know again illusions. Just they're going, they're having a courier on the, the die base, but. Radiant base under siege. Yeah. And, oh, here we go. Bone seven hops forward and will actually get taken out right away. He takes a walrus punch. Now the primal split comes from the brewmaster to try and make the hold. It will be a five v four on the field. X game backing up to try and reset their positioning here and look for a reinitiation. Bristle doing as much damage as he can to relocate forward and Mantis. Yeah, he'll get dropped straight away. Envy on a godlike streak now. As all the illusions are pressing forward. X game will be repelled. And now it's just about minimizing losses. Stallcat gets left behind. Song of the Siren is deployed. And they tried to catch more. Stallcat, they knew they had and they wanted more. Yeah. He doesn't get to blink off and he's dead. So now it is a, uh, let's see, Wisp, no buyback. Tusk, no buyback either. They'll both be in the grave for over a minute. And it looks like this is what Cloud9 were waiting for. Dire Glyph is available. That'll buy them a little bit of time. But this very well could be the final push of the game here, gods. And the, the heroes that are alive don't have buyback, so that's the other key thing. Bristleback with one life, Centaur with one life. This is where you just buy what you can. You should just get like get a value of Vlad's or something if you're the Centaur. He's got the money to buy a Vlad's and the Aura. I mean, at this stage, Aura probably one of the most cost effective lines in the game, but uh, item purchases aside, this is going to be a really Dyer's tough hold. Yeah, you see attack. Reeves and Equal off to the side looking Dyer's for an initiation here. They find Owie. They'll catch him once again. Oh, He's up. their target of choice. He will fall, but. Dyer's is it enough to stop their base from going down? Fada pops his BKB, will just TP home. He just like Ash! <laughs> oh, oh. oh, I thought he was safe. He's, all right, he goes down to the bristle, but Envy's just going to work on the base. They still have the glyph, but they don't use it to keep the melee racks alive. Tier 3 in the bottom almost falls. Envy will be happy with his damage. TP's home. Just a range rack standing in the mid, and melee have gone down in the top lane. So even though Owie gets picked off once again and X game make a cheeky hold, they still take pretty heavy losses and... Still just I one think step they, closer they to super. They probably feel they've got to go like five man mid end the game soon. Like, yep. you're you're losing bit by bit, and I don't know if five man mid is the right way to go. Pilot I top. Say yes. it ain't so. Pilot I. Stallcat will press forward with the snowball, the punch uh, into the ice shards there, and this should be a pretty easy kill. Buys himself some time uh, with the ghost scepter usage, but will get taken out. And fourth Roche now goes to X game. They'll grab okay. Cheese and Aegis once more. It is equal that picks up both of them. The Refresher Orb is live on the Shadow Shaman and will have his first set of wards cooling down in about 45 seconds. I have to if say, equal... base race, X game win the bank. Double Serpent Wards, like, Naga Siren's good at base races, but I don't think you match up against Double Serpent Wards, but yeah. that's kind of like ideal scenario for X game, maybe. This is still winnable for the Dire team. If they can catch Envy without buyback money, which is probably not going to happen anytime soon. They'll have to kill him, force a buyback, and maybe kill him again. But if they can somehow make that happen, there is some big potential for X game to just cripple the base in one fell swoop. With two heroes down, looks like they'll consider this their window, and they will start to press out. Envy, though, tightening the noose on the base. Illusion's pressing into the top lane, and he has an Illusion down bottom, cutting the creep wave, trying to get a little creep equilibrium back so he can finish off that bottom lane of Rax. Owie on the high ground. They'll go straight for him. He pops his BKB. Scared of Rasta initiation, and now we'll just get stunned up from the Abyssal. He'll fall, and Envy, or oh, pardon me, Aoi does not have a buyback. They're going to go all in, all in here. They've got another Serpent Wards too, but Envy clears up one lot. That's a good sleep just to get rid of those wards. Yep, and Envy does have a Refresher sitting on the Courier in the base that he bought not that long ago. They'll go in for as much damage as possible. The second set of Rasta Wards have come down. And look at the Radiant's dire base. Tier 4 is taking damage. The Illusion's doing so much work here as Bat Rider will fall, gets caught, or pardon me, buys back right into the game. Refreshes from Envy. Yep. He refreshes the sleep. The next Song of the Sirens, he'll TP back to save. His items are just on the ground. BKB and Refresher. They're going straight for the Tier 4s. Tier 4 will fall, the first one. There's the Aegis as Rasta gets taken out. I don't think X Game can do it. They just don't have the sustainability. GG it's gets called from X Game as they try to go for it, but oh. it's just not enough. Their base in the back will fall. The illusion Man. make it happen. Envy, like, that second, he refreshed the sleep and he probably, he used that second sleep, stalled the push and thought, he probably looked at the die base and said, okay, will I win a base race? Like, they clear up the Serpent Wards and that was just insane ending, really amazing decision making from Envy. Like, having the refresher all day, if he doesn't have that, I think they just lose the game. Like that seventh, yeah. eighth item on the courier, just making the difference. Yeah, the uh, the mobile wardrobe as they like to call it. 
Envy proves successful, but what a back and forth game. Alley 2000, I have not seen him focus that hard, I don't think, ever. Wow. So much effort was put into shutting him down, and they were successful. He was 0 11 and 15, really only had that one huge black hole uh, in that top lane near the tier yep. 2 tower in the latter portion of the match. But we even saw him once he had the refresher orb. He was that target of choice that put a bullseye on his back, and X Game yep. just continued to give it to him. Never found the buyback as well afterwards. Like, he bought the point boost of Sun Mag Scepter, but he died at the end there. Like, he BKB died to the Abyssal Blade and doesn't have buyback. That's where it's like, well, if he didn't buy the point booster, if he just saved buyback gold, Cloud9 would have been in a lot more comfortable position. So, mm -hmm. definitely AOI not going to be probably too pleased with his performance. Bone 7 did not have the best game. And as a result, we had a fantastic game. Yeah. So. I'm not complaining. Uh, we thought it'd be a little more one-sided in 58 minutes. It ends 41 to 40. X game again take a loss, but that team that you need to keep an eye out for is they do put up good matches. We won't delay any longer though. The next match uh, was scheduled to start about two minutes ago, so we will move into our final match of the day, which of course is Alliance versus MYM. We'll be right back.